Hey Artie, Jasmine and Autumn. It's on a really, really hot day. Um, did a bunch of errands. Um, brought Papa to his doctor. Um, got the oil changed on the car. Yeah, whatever. Um, then I ended up uh, being able to see you guys for like. Like a minute or so while I grabbed a few of my things. Um, I gotta get to tell you that I love you. I miss you in person. Um, wish I could hold you and you know, stay, you know, stay there longer. Um, these things aren't in my control right now. Um, so I am emotionally. I'm um, tired, and I miss you more than you will ever know. So I'm gonna just read from Prindle, and then I'm gonna um maybe do a video tomorrow. We're on chapter 14. Um, inside Nick. On the outside, Nick was still Nick. But inside, it was different. Oh sure, he still had a lot of great ideas. But now they scared him a little. For instance, Nick learned in social studies, a lot of class, that people who buy stuff are called consumers. If consumers stop buying, Stores and shops and restaurants go out of business. Then, boom, a new idea hit him. All the kids love lunchtime, but the awful part about lunch was the eating part. School food, and the food was never a surprise. You had to smell it all morning and then go eat it. The food was always bad. Well, thought Nick, school cafeteria is sort of a restaurant, isn't it? And the students are the consumers, right? And we don't really have to buy our lunches there, do we? Nick could see it all. He would get all the kids to bring their lunches home every day. So the ladies who made the lunches cooked better food. He was sure those women didn't cook food like that for their own families. Kids were, were the consumers with a dollar thirty-five in their pockets, and until the food was better, that's where their money would stay. Great idea. Nick was sure it worked, and he got all excited about it. But then Nick remembered what happened with Prindle. It stopped him cold. He was sure that if all the kids stopped buying lunch, sooner or later someone would figure out that it was all Nick's, Nick Allen's idea. He would get in trouble. People would write about it in the newspaper. Principal would call his parents. Anything could happen. So for the first time in his life, Nick kept a good idea to himself. He never even told John or Chris. And that changed Nick. His mom was the first to notice. Are things okay at school, honey? She asked one day in early March. He had seemed kind of down, a little sad. It worried her. Sure, said Nick. Everything's fine. Everything's okay with your friends? They haven't been hanging around here very much. Mom, honest, everything's fine. It's winter. Everyone's really busy with hockey and basketball. That's all. The Nick went to his room and shut the door. His grand had noticed the change, too. Poor little rascal had looked uh, her into the eye and said, But I really didn't have a friend with me. That boy wasn't in the class anymore. Now quieter, more careful, Nicholas Allen came into class every day. He did all his work perfectly. He didn't speak unless she called on him. He didn't laugh and joke with his friends like he used to. School would be over in a few months, and it seemed like there was nothing she could do, uh, she could do to help him. Toward the end of the year, Nick remembered the letter that Miss Granger had asked him to sign on the back when the Frindle business was just getting started. The chess game was over, so he was expecting to get that letter from Miss Granger any day, but all spring it didn't come, so he thought he must have forgotten about it. He must have forgotten about it. Nick was afraid to bring it all up again, but he was dying of curiosity. So on the last day of school, Nick knocked on Miss Granger's classroom door. She was straining up the textbooks on the bookcases below the windows. Without turning around, she sang out, Come in! Nick said, Hi, Miss Granger. Miss Granger stood up and turned to face him. Oh, it's you, Nicholas. I'm so glad you stopped by. I've been meaning to talk to you, and this will save me having to send you a letter this summer. Nick Golden said, That's what I came came for, a letter. Miss Granger looked puzzled. For half a second, and she said, Oh, that letter. Then she paused. You will recall, Nicholas, that I said I would send you that letter when all this was over. 
and it's not over. It's not. And he tilted his head to one side. That's when will it be over? He's going to smile and said, Oh, believe me, Nicholas, you'll know when it's over. I want to talk to you about something else. He walked across the room and stood about two feet from him. Nick had grown during the year, and their eyes were almost on the same level. Nick noticed that the eyes were softer, but just as powerful. I've noticed that you've been very quiet for the past few months. You know, Nicholas, you didn't do anything wrong this year. I know a lot of things happened, and a lot of things are said, and you must have had some difficult days here and there. But your idea was a good idea, and I have been very proud of the way you behaved most of the time. Nick was embarrassed, but Miss Granger kept on talking. Hey, Nicholas, you have, a, you have great things to do in this life. I'm absolutely sure you do, and you mustn't let a few hard days trick you into clamming up. Then Miss Granger reached out and shook Nick's hand and looked him in the face. Her eyes were turned up brighter than Nick had ever seen them before. She said, Nicholas Allen, I have enjoyed having you as a student. Now you go out there and have a wonderful summer, and I expect to hear remarkable things about you, young man. Miss Granger watched Nick start to leave, but before he got to the door, he turned and said, Thanks, Miss Granger. You have a great summer, too. Then he grinned and said, And don't forget to buy some new Pringles for next year. Thanks to his little talk to Miss Granger, for one of the healthy doses of summer vacation, Nick made a full recovery. He was proud that he had made up a new word, and he enjoyed thinking about all the commotion it had served up. That one little word had it made, it made fifth grade a year to remember. Before he started sixth grade, Nick was Nick again, and all through, through junior high and high school and college, he proved it. For example, two years later, all the school cafeterias in town were serving delicious food at least four days a week, all because of Nick, the consumer, and the state superintendent of schools had made a special trip to Westfield to learn why this little town had the most successful school lunch program in the state. And in high school, well, the stories about Nick's other adventures could go on and on and on, but that would delay the end of the story, the one that started when Nick was in fifth grade. Because the end of the story came later. Ten years later. And what was happening to Nick's word during those ten years? Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. Words don't uh, work that way. Words either get used or they don't. And Frindle is being used more and more. It is becoming a real word. So, I'll uh, hear more about that tomorrow. Um... Looking into your eyes was bittersweet. I was glad I finally got two, but it was not long enough. Didn't get to hear your voices. But, um, at least you got to hear me tell you that I love you and miss you. And that I want you to be good for your mom. And I uh, hope you all went to bed in time today. And uh, I don't know what you were working on when I was there, but hopefully uh, it came out awesome and I can't wait to see it, whatever you were doing. Love you guys.